yes, I'm wearing a lot of makeup today because I decided to try on a new TTRPG character for TikTok because that's the level of nerd we're working with. Hello, my name is Margaret Adele and welcome to another indie book review. Today I am reviewing Smoke and Hellfire by Kristen Brand. This is an urban paranormal fantasy all about a young witch who is chronicling her time being best friends with an exorcist. Admittedly, I waited a little bit on this one. I accepted this for review in November of 2022. It is May of 2023 as I filmed this. Not the longest I made an indie author wait, but it's it's up there, so uh, I'm not quite sure why I just didn't think to get to it. Uh, other review books must have just caught my attention more, but once I got to it, I was very pleasantly surprised. So this is written in the style of a memoir. Maggie is the point of view character and opens the book saying things like, I swear all of these things are true, they actually happen, I only changed the names for privacy sake, da 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 da, -da. and it sets up the idea that these are like real chronicling things, kind of like a, a Watson and Sherlock setup, I really like that setup of leaving the mystery of the big character because it's told through the lens of a side character type, but um, this is a series of four short stories that are chronicling um, Bea and Maggie working together uh, to defeat various supernatural paranormal things. Um, they first meet in the first story when Maggie's best friend, or I guess very close older witch friend, dies supposedly of an aneurysm, and Maggie goes to her friend's house to give her condolences and fuels a dark presence and thinks it might be a demon that had something to do with her friend's death. But she can't really do much with demons. She's still learning. She's still kind of a beginner witch. And so she calls a contact that she finds among her friend's uh, records and meets Bea. And so the first story, right out of the gate, is a literal exorcism. Um, thankfully, the stories switch up a lot as things go on. There are things with the Fae, with ghosts and a bunch of other stuff and there is a definite through line to it there is a chronology to the short stories um you can't just you know read them in whatever order and have it make sense it still follows their lives to a certain extent but each short story does have its own conflict that is resolved but also has recurring characters going on through the background that lets you know something else is up and i really loved the sense of tension throughout the entire book because there is a specific reason in the universe that Maggie sat down to write this memoir, but she's not forthcoming in what it is exactly. We know from the very first pages something has happened to Bea. Something at some point was a really big thing and, and Maggie hints that she's in danger and doesn't know how to save her, but for some reason, these memoirs will help maybe set the record straight. Maybe it's a cry for help so that someone else could find it and help do whatever needs to be done to save Bea from whatever. It's very up in the air. And I love that tension because she routinely brings it back in every story. Things like, oh, I wish it had ended there. Oh, it wasn't the last time we saw that character. You know, that kind of thing. You get the gist that... All of these short stories, even though at first glance they are kind of disconnected, all comes back in because that one shady character from that story gets referenced and that one asshole character gets referenced as becoming more important later. Now this is a series, so we don't see the ending. We don't see what actually happens to Bea in this series. My guess would be that's probably going to be like a late game reveal. I don't know how many books this is supposed to be, um, but this was short, I think think really short. I, it's hard to tell because the, the text in the copy I got was really dense, but it was about like 140, 144 pages. So maybe in a more standard type set, a more standard for format, it'd be closer to 200. I'm not sure, but it read really quickly in a good way. It had a good voice to it because it is Maggie, uh, like speaking and, and effectively, trying to call out to the reader. Um, in many cases, she flat out says, reader, you might be thinking this, but that didn't happen, like that kind of stuff. Um, you also get the gist that in the world of the narrative, Bea has a specific reputation and Maggie is aware of that reputation and so she's writing to people that are aware of that reputation. Like it, it definitely feels like you're reading a, a memoir 
of someone, um, but I love that ongoing tension. Um, the stories themselves were varied enough. It wasn't all just demons. It was a bunch of different stuff. I loved all the mysteries around both of our main characters. Uh, Bea very clearly has something going on. You you learned about that in like, the first story. Like, how can you do that? And she's very uh, cagey about who or what she is. And uh, Maggie has... Uh, various secrets around her family and her time with a local coven of witches that she like hates, considers them all posers. Uh, so they both have a lot of secrets that they don't reveal to each other. But I really did like the friendship between them. Uh, I particularly like there's one point where Maggie is like, you know, talking with a client that's distraught. And, and she's like, do you want tea? And the client's like, I don't have any tea. And Maggie's like, oh, I have tea. And Bea's like, you carry travel tea with you? <laughs> and Maggie's like, yeah, what? Like, it's weird? <laughs> Just that juxtaposition of uh, Maggie is definitely the cottage core long skirt girly, which, as a fellow long skirt girly, ironically also named Margaret, uh, I stan, I I vibe with Maggie a lot, uh, and Bay, uh, Bea, I'm, I'm not sure exactly. There's so many different ways to pronounce the nickname B-E-A. I'm going with Bea because I think that's the character is uh, Latina, and, and I'm going with the more Latina standard pronunciation of that nickname. Uh, but um, Bea is such a different <laughs> character type than Maggie, and they play off each other really well. And they talk about how, you know, Bea is, you know, messy and kind of annoying and obnoxious at times. And they, they both have ways of annoying each other, but there are these great moments where they're very protective of each other. You see Bea getting anxious when Maggie tags along and ends up in danger. And of course, Maggie's concern for uh, Bea rings through the entire book. It's literally why she's writing the book to try and help her friend. The friendship is really strong. I know a lot of people on my channel will be like, but Margaret, what, is there sapphic vibes? Are they? I don't think so. <laughs> That's not the gist that I've gotten. Um, at least not from here. I think it is just a friend thing. Not that I would be upset <laughs> if it became something more obviously. <laughs> but I think, at least at this moment, it's just a friend thing. They're just good friends and roommates and care for each other in that way. Uh, but I did like it. I almost wish it was a little bit longer, although I, it didn't necessarily feel like a lot was missing. Like, you got enough with each of the short stories. Uh, maybe I was just really hoping to get more of the secrets, because it feels like most of the questions were just asked, and none of them were answered necessarily in this one so I would have liked it if we had at least one secret answered or one mystery revealed what have you uh, to tide us over until the next book when presumably some secrets will be revealed I don't know I really did enjoy this one I gave it five stars big fan highly recommend it I'm sorry I waited so long for it but hey at least the author got the fancy makeup version of Margaret in the video. Not many authors get that. Thank you so much for watching uh, and thank you so much for dealing with my weird makeup face. Uh, but regardless, nothing else to say. I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow.